Let me use Georgia as an example. I can even use my home state, Illinois, as an example, too. Atlanta, Georgia has a huge population of black folks and wealthy black folks, right? That's right. Atlanta probably makes more money for the state of Georgia than the next four or five major cities combined. If the black folks in Atlanta would just come in one mindset and say, you know what, we're not going to spend our money here until y'all do what we ask y'all to do, that would make the state bow down and do whatever y'all wanted them to do. Same thing in Chicago. Chicago is the only major city in the city, excuse me, major city in the state of Illinois. The next biggest state is like, uh, next biggest city is like Springfield or Peoria, Illinois. If all the black folks in Chicago said, look, we're not going to spend our money until the state does X, Y, and Z, I guarantee you the state would roll because the majority of the income that's made in those two states come from the two biggest cities or the two, or the biggest city in those states that has a major population of black people. Now, let's tie into what you just said with Minister Farrakhan. I'm going to play Eye on the Prize next week. When I play this, it's going to be a particular point that I want you guys to listen to and, and listen to how they talked about how the whole civil rights movement, the premise, after they did the march on, on, uh, in Montgomery, they understood the economic leveraging power that they had to create. In fact, the last speech Dr. King gave in Memphis before he died talked about him talking, talked about uh, picketing and boycotting Pepsi Cola and other industries that was not providing anything to the black community. If we would literally take our economic power and leverage it, then you know what? We would be able to empower through local politics. We would be able to empower through, through the state level. The problem is this. They do whatever they want to do and say, you know what, y'all ain't going to complain about it. I mean, I got a phone call last night saying that they're going to take me off there in Cleveland. They, in two weeks, you're you going to be gone. But, you know, what can I do about it? I ain't got no control over it. Because if the people don't, don't call and get mad about it, they're going to do what they want to do. I couldn't agree with you more, brother. I mean, and that's the whole thing. And Nathan, I thank you for the call. God bless you. You know, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've gotten to the point in radio that if, when they change the stations and take me off, I don't even get upset. I don't. Because honestly, if the people aren't going to say anything, people going to do what they want to do. I can't stop that. And, and what I've learned since I've been doing radio, I was very naive. I believed people on their word. And what I found out in doing radio, it's a lot of folks who listen to this show who will be like, yeah, Warren, I'm with you. Yeah, Warren, I'm with you. When I run out on the field, though, I may have four or five people behind me. Everybody else, oh, man, I couldn't, I couldn't do it, man. I'm sorry. And that's, that, that's the problem that I see with us as a community. When we have an issue, the difference between the 60s generation and every generation since, when we have an issue... We won't come together. You'll get a few. You'll get some. And then when we do come together, what do we do? We don't make it a movement. We make it a moment. Gina ended up being a moment instead of a movement. Gina should have been the movement of the next great wave in civil rights in this country. With all those people, everybody involved. But Gina ended up being a moment. And it ended up being a moment because people wanted to party. People wanted to be in control. Instead of just coming together and doing what was best for the people, everybody wanted to be, I'm the leader, I'm the leader. I did this, I did that. We have to stop taking things that are crucial and making it minuscule. Now, my grandmother used to have a saying about black folk. She said, let me tell you something about black people. We take minor and make it major. And I said, Grandma, what you talking about? She said, we will take something that is very minor and blow it all out of proportion. But when something is major, we don't open our mouths. And now that I've grown up, I see the wisdom that my grandmother was giving me. Because we have major issues that we don't even talk about. And what's crazy, when I talk about them on here, I get people calling me up or emailing me, why are you so negative?
Wait a minute. You don't see this problem? Well, I know the problem exists, but we ain't got to talk about it. Let's talk about the good stuff. What? Okay. If you know this exists and you know it's a problem, how do you fix the problem? You, you, you work through it. You talk through it to find a solution. You don't ignore it. You don't act like it doesn't exist. You deal with it. And you can take this on so many levels. From your, your workplace to your school. What's Tiger Woods' biggest problem right now? They're crucifying him still in the media because you know what? He hasn't dealt with it. He hasn't come out and said anything. Hell, for that case, we don't even know where yet. But for some reason, we want to be kumbaya all the time. Instead of saying, you know what? We do have an issue. And that's why I, I, I said today I was going to make the show about this. I want to see if you guys really get that we do have some problems in our community. And that we need to be looking for the solutions, not acting like they don't exist. Uh, we don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about these good things over here. The good things are wonderful things. We are beautiful people. But at the same time, come on, man. Don't you want to fix what's wrong, too? And mark my words, if you don't fix what's wrong, it spreads just like a cancer. It's, it's going to go from being that person's problem to being your doorstep. And then you're going to be saying, Lord, why weren't we doing nothing earlier? 877-373-9766. Also go to YouTube.